a time for waiting and I believe There's a time for loving and I believe There's a time for hoping and I believe in you The light in my darkness You're the voice of my silence And I believe Called my name, you put your seal upon my heart, and from then there is no life for me without you. You placed your people in my hands and asked me to be like There is no love for me without them. You are me, they are my gift. You are sweet, but they're my belief. And there's a time for waiting, and I believe. There's a time for loving, and I believe. There's a time for hoping, and I believe in you. The light in my darkness. You're the voice of my silence And I believe in you Somewhere inside each human heart There is the seed of your land I want to feed the ground that nurtures Somewhere deep inside the emptiness and pain of life There is a hope that can't be broken For you I live, for them I give For you I speak, for them I believe And there's a time for waiting and I believe There's a time Loving and I believe in you There's a time for hoping and I believe in you The light in my darkness You're the voice of my silence And I believe in you We will start with a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much, Jesus, for inviting each one of us here tonight in this School of the Word to spend time and to have the space to connect with you again, to listen again to your Word that gives us life, to listen again to your presence that gives us the awareness that we are loved and to gain strength to love the people you have entrusted to us. And we ask you, Lord, that tonight can be a time of encountering you once again and a time to let your word grow in us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So good evening, everybody. Just in case, for those who have seen me only for the first time, my name is Monica. I am one of the Burbung Day missionaries from Singapore. And I'm very glad to see everyone uh, here, present and ready again to spend time with, the word, with Jesus in and through his word. So welcome again to the School of the Word session. This series, just to remind everybody, right, is called The Word is Living and Active Series. And this is our third session. And as I said, we are here to spend time to listen again to the Word of God. And that was also the invitation for those of us who were around last week 
the invitation that parents also extended to us to to encounter the person of Jesus, the Word made flesh. That's how we started the series, right? And it's important for us to experience and we experience Jesus alive and active, coming to speak to us personally. Because it is only from these life encounters with him that we become followers of the word. And that is, if you notice the, the poster for this series, that is the theme of today's session, followers of the word. To become followers of the word means to become people or persons who place others or to, who brings others in contact with the person of Jesus. And this is what we see happening uh, today in the story of the Samaritan woman. This is the passage that we are going to deepen on tonight, John 4. The Samaritan woman became a sower of the word to her own people. And I'm sure we all know the story, right? And it's good again tonight to just recall what happened to her, right? It's a, it's a long passage, but tonight we are going to focus on the second part of the passage. So the story of the Samaritan woman encountering Jesus began first with Jesus making time to stop by the well near Samaria to encounter the woman. Jesus stopped there and he struck a conversation with her when she drew near to draw water. And it was in this dialogue that the woman came to realize slowly, slowly that it is really the Messiah who was speaking to her, who was encountering her. And Jesus revealed himself to her in a very personal and intimate way. I am he, he said, the one who is speaking to you, the one who is speaking with you. And the woman encountered in Jesus the Messiah, God, whom she had been waiting for, God, whom she had been thirsting for, God, who knows everything about her, to whom she doesn't need to hide, to whom she doesn't, doesn't need to be someone else, but just be herself, and with whom she experienced acceptance and love. And in the encounter that she had with Jesus, her thirst for a living, loving God was quenched. And that is why, after the encounter that she had with Jesus, it says in the passage, the woman left her water jar. Why? Because she didn't need it anymore to drink or to draw water from the well. She had found the source of living water. Instead, she became the one who brought the living water back to her hometown. The passage continued, right? After her encounter with Jesus, she left the water jar and she went, or in some translation, it says she ran into town and said to the people, come and see a man who has told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Messiah? Come and see. That was her invitation to her hometown people. From a listener to the word, from a listener of the word, the Samaritan woman, at this point, she became a sower of the word because she brings people into contact with the person of Jesus. And we can see from the story, how did she sow the word? First, by being herself, right? She went to her town and her way of being herself was to talk, you know? to recount her story of what impacted her when she encountered Jesus at the well. She simply told the people, this is a man, there was a man, he had told me everything I had done. And that was just her talking and maybe she likes to talk, no? But there are also other ways that we told the word or we bring people into contact with Jesus that may not always be through a public preaching. St. Francis of Assisi says, Preach always, but use words only if necessary. Because for the most part, we sow the word through how we live. We sow the word in the simple actions of our day-to-day -day life. And it can be as simple as giving a word of encouragement, or remembering someone's birthday and wishing that person, right? 
or remembering someone's concern that they have shared with us before and follow up on that, or doing a small favour that was unasked for that is hidden, or really praying for someone when we are asked to keep somebody in prayer. And I remember uh, when I was going home to Singapore, I just, um, well, three months ago, right? I just came back to Singapore from, from Spain, where I was based before. And there was a send off mask that they did, you no, know, for all the missionaries who were going to leave for their next destination. And when I was saying goodbye to all the people there, uh, after the mask, a missionary came to me. Uh, and she was a missionary who, with whom I have worked or collaborated before in, in the apostolate or in the mission. No, She came to me and she gave thanks to me. But she said, not just for the collaborations or the projects that, or, or the mission trips that we had done together, but she gave thanks especially for the time that when her father was sick two years earlier, she remembered that I went to her and said that I will pray for her father. And at the moment when she told that to me, I actually couldn't I actually couldn't recall that moment that I actually approached her and told her that I will pray for her dad. It's because to me maybe it seems so such a small thing, such an insignificant thing that I could do for her at that point in time, right? Because her father was back in her home country. But what she caught me, what she said caught me off guard. Because even if I myself had forgotten about it, she didn't. And it meant a lot for that person at that point in time. And it made an impact for her. And it encouraged her in her own journey. We saw the word in letting others experience the presence of God's love through us, through our life. And it can be something or it can be through something that we are already doing as a routine. But to do it with more awareness or to do it with the awareness that we are loving, taking care of our elderly parents or being patient with someone at work, taking time to listen actively and not just uh, passively to our children, to our friends, being honest or sincere in our relationship with the people around us or just asking for forgiveness again or to forgive. And this is often a challenge, right? Because I think it's easier to do acts of kindness to complete strangers rather than to the people that we live and see and interact each day who knows us and we also know them, right? In their strength or also in their weakness. And yet, this is how the Samaritan woman did it. She sold the word not just to the strangers in the next town, but she went back to her own hometown. She went back perhaps to her family, to her friends, to the people whom she sees and lives with every day. And the people heeded her word, listened to her, and the passage said they went out of town to come to see Jesus. And I'm sure we all here have experienced in certain moments in our life journey being sowers of the word. And I'm sure we can also recall the moment where we share also the same experience as a Samaritan woman that we try to sow the word through our words and our deeds and people heeded them and they came to know Jesus. But there are also moments when sowing the word or sowing the faith, especially to the people close to us, moments that may not be so smooth sailing, right? Not as smooth at least as we thought it would be or we imagine it, or we wish it to be. Or partly because sowing the seed, sowing the word, like sowing a seed, it takes time for the seed to germinate. It takes time for it to put out roots, and then shoot, and then flower and fruit, right? It takes time and the right condition. And often, these are beyond our control. On the other part, we are often impatient people. I don't know about you. I find myself to be, no? And we want to see the shoot already growing the next mini. After I sow the seed, I make the whole, I sow the seed. I want already the, the thing to bear fruit, no? But sometimes the seed takes very long to even show any indication that it was sown correctly or it is growing or not. And at this time, sowing 
can become or can seem to be a difficult and thankless chore. And Jesus is not a stranger to this difficult experience. In the passage of the Samaritan woman, so as you know the story, right? So she left the water jar, she went into town. And then when she was away in, the, in her town, the disciples of Jesus came back to Jesus. And Jesus said to his disciples this phrase, one soul and another week. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work and you are sharing the fruit of their work. And as followers, sometimes we don't like to hear these words of Jesus because it means that, huh, perhaps I will not see, I will not get to see the fruit of the seed that I just sowed. And there is perhaps no sure or guaranteed reward no, for sowing. Then I would rather be just the reaper. Lah, no? I can see the fruit and I can sell it and I can eat it, right? But here, Jesus invites us to a change of mindset. To realize that part of the job description to be the sower of the word is to sow for a future that is not our own. And that is a poem, the title of a poem, often attributed to San Oscar Romero. To sow for a future that is not our own. One sows and another reaps. Many times the sower may not be the reaper. When we think of the seed of faith that we have tr tried to sow in our children or to our parents or to our siblings, and the only thing that we see so far is no growth, no? or even rejection, or even deterioration, right? In these times, Jesus comes to us like he does tonight, to remind us of this faith, one soul and another week. It's a phrase actually of encouragement because it reminds us to keep trusting and to keep sowing. We may not be the one who will reap the fruit of the seed that we sow, but there will be a reaper. Means there will be fruit. When? We don't know. But how many times we can also recall, right? Not just the difficult moments, but how many times have we heard of people praying for the conversion or the baptism of their parents or praying for the reconciliation of their family members and all these um, prayers that we hear, right? The stories that circulate around us. How many times we heard these stories and later on, it's only after so many years that really the parents were tired or really their children come back to church or really the reconciliation was done between siblings or family members. Hearing this story or recalling this story, and again, with the phrase that Jesus says to us tonight, it reminds us to keep the patience, to keep souls. It reminds us also to grow in humility as followers, that we are not called to be the one who knows or makes the seed grow, but we are called to be sowers. Faithful sowers of his word. Sowers who trust that one day, someday, even if we are not the one who will see it, there will be a harvest. And this is the harvest that many of the people will begin to believe in Jesus, just like the Samaritans of the Samaritan woman's town. They began to believe in Jesus and they asked Jesus to stay with them. And at the end of the story, they even told the Samaritan woman, you know what, mom, we don't believe just because you told us so, but because we have encountered him, the Messiah himself, and we have heard him, and because we have encountered him, we believe in him. Just imagine, no, this is the harvest time. And when at that point, we will rejoice as followers of the word of God. Because people have come really encountered Jesus in their own life, experienced Jesus by their own selves, no longer through us, and we can disappear. And so while we wait and while we work hard as sowers, let us not lose this vision of the harvest. No? Let us not lose this vision because it is the promise of Jesus himself to all of us, all of his sowers that no sowing effort is wasted. Nothing is wasted. It is a, a vision of hope that the harvest will come in ways that is beyond our imagination. 
in ways that we don't know when, but it will come. And so with that, let us enter prayer tonight again, like the Samaritan woman going to the well to encounter that Jesus is already waiting for us to speak his word of promise and his word of hope to encourage us again in our efforts of sowing and to give us again the joy of sowing his word, of being called the sowers of the word. And so as we enter into this time of silence, we slowly enter into silence and read attentively the word of God, listening to him again, telling us that it is him, it is Jesus himself who is speaking to us allowing his words to bring us hope and to make us joyful sowers of the word.